Welcome to the 20th Creature Fridays video where we're going to take a look at Melolontha melolontha or the Maybug. If you're new here, my name's Emily and I'm a zoologist with experience in a range of different types of work and a really big passion for bringing free educational videos about nature to you. It's great to have you here and I'm always ready in the comments below to answer any questions you have on the topics that we cover in these videos. Maybugs go by two names. The first, Maybug, comes from the peak period of time that you can see adults, which is May and June each year. The second name, Cockchafer, comes from the Old English words for large plant gnawing beetle, or to some people, just big beetle. They've certainly earned this name. At three centimetres long, this is the UK's largest species of scarab beetle. Although they are most common in southern Britain, Maybugs can be found in Northern Ireland and even a few spots of Scotland. For most of their lives, you won't actually see the Maybug. Adult females will lay their eggs in the soil of fields, meadows and grasslands, and after the larvae hatch they will remain there for up to five years. These larvae are known as rookworms because they are a favourite food of our rooks. They are fat white grubs with a curved body shape and brown heads. They can be distinguished from similar stag beetle larvae because they have a browner head, are half their size, aren't as chunky and aren't found eating rotting wood. Instead they feed on the roots of growing vegetables and grasses. When they are ready, having grown up to around 4 centimetres, they will dig deeper into the soil to pupate, ready for their body to change into its adult form. In late spring, adult maybugs will start to dig their way out of the soil. They have a reddish-brown ribbed wing case, a blackish head, and white triangles on their sides. You can tell that despite their name, maybugs aren't actually bugs, but beetles. The wings of true bugs that are able to fly usually overlap but the wings of maybugs meet at their midline, which is a characteristic of beetles. Adults will only live for the next five or six weeks. Although they can be seen flying around treetops, where they feed on leaves and flowers, their main purpose is to find a mate and create the next generation. Both males and females have fan-like antennae that can be stretched out at will to reveal feathers. The males have seven antennae feathers, while the females have six. The antennae of males are also longer than those in females. This is thought to be related to the mate searching behaviour. These antennae are the olfactory sense organs of the maybug, so they give them a sense of smell. Males with longer fans that have extra feathers have an increased olfactory surface area, so are better able to smell for nearby females. The flight of maybugs in search of mates is the most obvious sign that they are present. The beating of their wings creates a loud whirring sound that is often heard in gardens on summer evenings. However, this flight is fairly clumsy, and so they're often heard bumping into lit windows at night. The whirring noise, combined with that long pointed abdomen, can often be quite scary. However, these adults are actually harmless to people. This stinger-like point is actually called a pygidium. Its shape is specifically adapted to help the female lay her eggs deeper in the soil so that they can hatch out safely. Unfortunately, like many of our invertebrates, their numbers were harmed during the 1900s by the use of pesticides, deliberately killing them, and accidental killing by cars. Evidence suggests that their numbers are now recovering. A great way to help maybugs is to leave out a patch in your garden that you don't personally dig in, so that their larvae doesn't get dug up. Or if you see an adult that's fallen on its back, you can help turn them the right way up. If you want to support me in continuing to create these free educational videos, then check out my new Patreon page. I have five different monthly support tiers to choose from, ranging from just £2 up to the higher tiers where you can vote for video topics, have your name credited at the end of each video, receive personalised art of any UK species, and get one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with me on any nature-related topic of your choice. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature.